Hello, and welcome to the webinar. Today we will talk about automating container security using DevOps processes on AWS with Trend Micro. My name is Sean Larson. I'm a Strategic Global Alliance Manager with AWS. I also have presenting with me Jeff, Jeff Westfall, Technical Director of Trend Micro, and Jason Craddett, Senior Director of Information and Technology with Pivot. To start us out, security is a job zero for AWS. And we don't have a business if we can't secure our services. We know it's going to come up eventually. The CISO will find out, and we want to get ahead of it. Prevent anti patterns from emerging, and introduce new ways to improve security as you transition workloads to AWS. Most of all, we bring it up and earn trust with our trust of our customers. Your data on AWS represents your business and livelihood, the trust with your customers and the privacy of security for real people. For enterprises, even those several months or even a couple of years into their moves into the cloud, it is still new territory. If you're operated data centers and tra traditional networks for 40 years, some of those things may feel new for you. Customers want to know that they can maintain a sense of control. So at AWS and our partners, we help guide them to chart this new territory. Lastly, security has always been just plain hard and our customers want to get ahead of it. We look after security of the cloud and our customers look after security in the cloud. AWS is responsible for protecting the infrastructure that runs all of the security services offered by AWS Cloud. The infrastructure is composed of hardware, software, networking, and facilities that run AWS Cloud services. Customers' responsibility will be determined by the cloud, AWS Cloud services and partner solutions that customers select. This determines the amount of configuration work the customers must perform as a part of security responsibilities. For a long time, organizations had to make a choice between moving fast or maintaining a high degree of security. One of the fundamental benefits of the cloud is that it lets you do both. Our infrastructure is architected to be one of the most flexible and secure cloud computing environments available. For startups to big enterprises, speed is always, speed matters a lot. My goal for this session is to show you how we can move fast and secure at the same time. Many organizations face maintaining and managing security on their on-premises infrastructure. But why? Predominantly a lack of visibility. In an on-premise environment, it can be difficult to know what resources and data are out there at any given time, when it's moving and who is utilizing and accessing it. For example, it requires expensive complex tooling to get an accurate real-time asset inventory. Most organizations just don't have the level of visibility that they would like in an on-premise environment. And without visibility, it is challenging for organizations to adequately secure their infrastructure and their data to meet the security and compliance requirements. Also, a low degree of automation. Another typical challenge is trying to get rid of manual processes employed to remediate issues. Think copying and pasting information from one tool to another or manually applying patches. It's been difficult to automate key security tasks due to issues such as interoperability of third party and homegrown tools. Manual processes tend to lead inconsistent execution, longer wait times to adjust all systems, and in most cases, disrupt the customer's experience. So the goal to automation is to programmatically handle tasks that would otherwise be done manually by IT staff. This is much easier in the cloud, as you will see. The combination of the lack of visibility into their own environment coupled with a low degree of automation comprises an organization's ability to move quickly and effectively secure their on-premises infrastructure.
With AWS, your control where your data is stored, who can access it, and what resources your organization is consuming at any given moment. Fine-grained identity and access controls combined with continuous monitoring for near real-time security information ensures that the right resources have the right access at all times whenever your information is stored. Reduce risk as you scale by using the security automation and activity monitoring services to detect suspicious security events like configuration changes across your ecosystem. You can integrate our services with partner solutions to support existing workflows, streamline your operations, and simplify compliance reporting. Automating security taps on AWS enables you to be more secure by reducing human configuration errors and giving your team more time to focus on the work critical to your business. Select from a wide variety of deep integrated solutions that can be combined to automate tasks in novel ways, making it easier for your security team to work closely with developer operations teams to create and deploy code faster and more securely. For example, by deploying technologies like Trend Micros and leveraging AWS machine learning, AWS enables you to automatically continue to discover, classify, and protect sensitive data in AWS with just a few clicks of our console. Security is our top priority. That is why we listen closely to our customers to offer both a secure cloud computing environment and innovative security services that classify security and compliance needs of the most risk sensitive organizations. Today, AWS protects millions of active customers around the world. Our customers represents diverse industries with a wide range of use cases, lar including large enterprises, startups, educational institutions, government organizations. The scale and global reach these customers give us, broad visibility, deep perspective on cloud security, knowledge with which we rapidly reinvest back into the leading edge infrastructure and services. Security at AWS starts with our core infrastructure, custom built cloud designed to meet the most stringent security requirements in the world. Our infrastructure is monitored 24 by N7 to ensure confidentiality, integrity, and availability of our customers' data. The same world-class security experts who monitor their in infrastructure also build and maintain a broad selection of innovative security services, which can help you simplify meeting your own security and regulatory compliance. As an AWS customer, regardless of your size or investment, you inherit, you inherit all benefits of our experience tested against the stringent of third-party assurance frameworks. AWS is vigilant about your privacy. Because our customers care deeply about security, we have a world-class team of security experts monitoring our systems 24 by seven to protect your content. With AWS, you can build the most secure global infrastructure knowing you always own your data including the ability to encrypt it, move it, and manage retention. We provide tools that allow you to easily encrypt your data in transit and at rest to help ensure that only authorized users can access it using keys managed by AWS Key, key, key System Manager and managing your own encryption keys with Cloud HSM. We also give you control and visibility you need to help demonstrate that you comply with regional and local data privacy laws and regulations. The design of your global infrastructure allows you to retain complete control over the regions which your data is physically located, helping you meet your data residency requirements. AWS supports more security standards and compliance certifications than any other offering, including PC DSS, PCI DSS, HIPAA, FedRAMP, SEC Rule 17A4, EU Data Protection Directive, and FISMA, helping satisfy compliance requirements for virtually every regulatory agency around the globe.
In addition to security of our environment, AWS makes a wide range of security tools and features available to our customers. Depending on security of the application or the content you choose to deploy, AWS and its partners offer 700, over 700 tools and features to help you meet your security objectives. Next, I would like to hand it off to our next speaker, Jeff Wessler. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. So just a quick background on Trend Micro. So we've been around around uh, 30 years now, but we've been focused solely on cybersecurity. So I hear a lot that Trend Micro is just this kind of AV company, but if we've kind of already touched on, our solutions go much further beyond than just AV. So Trend's been a market leader in nearly every solution category and actually manages the world's largest bug bounty program, which we call the Zero Day Initiative. So while we focus here on our hybrid cloud solution, which is deep security, keep in mind that Trend has over 30 years experience in that threat research and in the innovation. So hybrid cloud could mean a lot of things. Each organization really looks at hybrid cloud kind of in their own way. Every business and application's journey is, is always different. We recall starting with physical servers. These were really our only option. Then we quickly adopted virtualization and hyper-converged infrastructure for VDI. Then we started hearing all of this buzz around cloud. And we may have started to test the waters there a little bit. Some businesses may have started full data center migrations. Others began to completely redesign applications to function in a cloud model. And now we're starting to hear more about Docker and, and Kubernetes, and we're starting to touch on things like serverless-based architectures. So it's important to remember that all of these fundamental aspects of a business's journey to hybrid cloud has to include security. But then we need to leverage a single solution, right? A single tool that can secure our applications throughout that entire journey. But then that may also mean multiple layers of security and then also multiple levels of security. So our goal with hybrid cloud then is to be secure. And so that's an easy statement to make, but then, I mean, it's trying to understand what those security controls really require. So we understand we have these new compliance requirements, and we have this new shared responsibility model now to adapt to. And now we have these cloud native controls that we may already be leveraging. So we shouldn't have to sacrifice security as our applications evolve, right? Our developers, they just want to move fast. They want to automate everything and they want to run that application anywhere within our organizations, but then in a secured and an automated and a repeatable manner. So we touched on the shared security model. We also, we also touched on native security controls, but let's also focus more on shared security controls with Trend Micro and AWS and where Trend Micro may fill some of those gaps. So we're gonna break that down into two kind of key focus areas here, pre-deployment and then runtime security. So to start, when we, when we talk about pre-deployment, it's really focusing on our application pipelines, right? So looking at a CI CD pipeline, we're trying to look at potentially scanning our images then prior to deployment to a container, right? So we should be scanning our gold images prior to committing those to a registry. And then even maybe a second scan once the development teams add their additional library to that image. So the important takeaway here then is that we begin to shift kind of left in our application lifecycle. Security still is a critical asset, aspect, sorry. Our developers wanna move faster, right? We, they wanna kind of make security, they, they don't wanna make security an overall design constraint. So we wanna to try to build this process into our overall CI CD pipelines and then we're automating the scanning of malware, the scanning of vulnerabilities, and then looking for embedded secrets within our code. So then we look at runtime security, right? So now we're moving into our EC2 instance. So a single agent here now has the ability to run seven different layered security controls. So we're talking about next-gen anti-malware, web reputation, firewall, intrusion prevention, integrity monitoring, log inspection, and application control. So now our application is, is running, 
right? So we, we may be leveraging one or maybe several AWS native security controls already. So while we're focusing on these seven different layers of security on the actual EC2 instance itself, we also need to be able to share that information with AWS native security tools. So for example, if guard duty detects an attacker is doing some form of reconnaissance, you know, we need to automate a vulnerability scan with deep security to confirm our EC2 instance has the latest rules in place for any new or recent vulnerability disclosures. We, we need to be able to send events to say SNS, maybe trigger Lambda functions to move security groups, maybe share a malicious IP with the AWS WAF. So these are just a few examples of why integration and automation with AWS native controls become so important. So our EC2 instances may be more static, they may, they may be more dynamic, but chances are your applications require some form of scalability, but then security should not interfere with this process, right? We need to build security into the EC2 instance itself and then assure that full protection immediately at runtime and then at scale. So you may be running EC2 instances for your host container platform. You may be using a managed service like EKS. The important thing here to remember is that once that container is running in production, we still need to look at those same runtime controls. So our shared security model changes here slightly depending on your container management platform, depending on maybe what build automation you're using, but security still plays a key role, right? We need to understand what native container controls are important to you, what services, what processes, and then look for where those security gaps may exist. So these controls may be at runtime, but then they also need to be container aware as well, right? They need to understand what services, what processes are associated with Kubernetes or maybe Docker. So if you, and again, just as an example, you recall the fairly recent vulnerability with SDD, right? These are events, these are alerts that the security team needs to be made aware of. So quick recap here, we're looking for, again, a, a single solution, a single tool for all aspects of your business's hybrid cloud journey. So one solution, managing security pre-deployment and at runtime, leveraging multiple layers of security, fundamentally using any method of automation and orchestration across virtually any operating system and throughout all aspects of infrastructure within your business's hybrid cloud environment. So keeping all this in mind, we're, we're a top security partner with AWS. We're a launch partner for nearly all security services. Trend is part of the seller and marketplace advisory boards and we're a preferred partner within the AWS managed services. We're of course on the marketplace. We're available as a software as a service or in a SaaS model. And we also have flexible perpetual and consumption based pricing. So with that, I will turn it over. Hey, Jeff. Thank you. This is uh, Jason Kratit, Senior Director of Technology at Pivot. I appreciate you guys spending the time with us this afternoon. I'll tell you a little bit about who we are. Likely you haven't heard of us. Um, so Pivot is a software organization that supports energy transporters. Um, and what that might mean is oil and gas pipelines or railroad or electric transmission and distribution. If you have energy assets and you want to move them, from one place to another, our software helps you understand the environment around uh, your assets. So it could be things like environmental species or wetlands or, or, or just other infrastructure you might be getting close to. Um, you need to know that for regulatory purposes, but also because you care about the environment and, and the world around you. Um, so our software helps do that. Uh, we're a small organization. We're around 30 or so people. Uh, we're really based um, all over the Midwest, so we've got some some people on the East Coast and, and people in the South as well. Uh, we're close to our customers, right? Our customers, we've got probably around 100 and so you know unique customers, and that equates into thousands of uh, individual users who use our software every day to understand um, what's around their assets. So. Um, we moved to the cloud um, quite some time ago in 2012, and we we ran into all sorts of challenges, right? We were on-prem and we moved, 
primarily for that second bullet, right? We, we needed to move fast. We wanted to get our software out into our customers' hands because it does us no good uh, during the development of the software. It only really matters when somebody can start to use it and, and benefit from it. Um, so we wanted to make that happen as quick as possible and, and really as simply as possible. Uh, and then also, of course, we're protecting a lot of you know, information that's critical to our customers. So we care a lot about security and we wanted to make it as frictionless as possible as we get, um, get our products into our customers' hands. Um, of course, um, as we move and, 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 and learn more about our customers' needs, we really need flexibility and scalability to meet ever increasing data demands that they give us or just new interesting requirements and visualizations they want to see about the, their infrastructures. So we have always been evolving and, and searching for new ways to solve uh, their new problems. But of course, we moved to the cloud in 2012 and we had servers and that was great, but the world just continues to change. Um, so we really needed to find a place where we could uh, embrace change and embrace how we uh, accept challenges. Uh, and we needed a good cloud provider to do that and obviously a good security provider to help us with those changes. So it's probably no secret uh, because I'm on this webinar that we chose Amazon uh, as our, um, as our cloud provider way back when. Um, and we are incredibly happy that we made uh, such a gutsy call, I think, in 2012. Maybe it wasn't gutsy, but it felt like it was to us. Um, and quickly, when we started moving into the cloud, we found that um, we needed to think a little differently about security, right? And we couldn't really put border security um, on our networks, and we really couldn't put IDS IPS on the border, and we, we just couldn't think like that. So we really um, needed to find a security partner as well that was kind of cloud ready back then. And, and we ran into trend and we haven't looked back. So we, we got in, interested in Amazon, obviously, to remove that friction I talked about. We really wanted to find ways to again, get code into our customers' hands or get our products into our customers' hands. Um, but one of the things as, as Jeff sort of mentioned is we wanted to be able to, especially more recently, secure our environment um, before our customers use it. You know, that old traditional mindset is uh, before DevOps was dev went and they you know, got requirements, they put a lot of effort into building good software. And then at the end, what happens, right? They throw it over the fence and say, all right, ops, go put this into production. Um, and that's what my team does. And, and, and we've done that for a long time, but obviously my peer in the software engineering space said, you know, we, we need to do better. You know, we need to really, really collaborate uh, and, and work together to get things done. Because again, if we can move faster, our customers can use our products and it's good for business and it's good for our customers. So we found ways to implement DevOps practices. So now we could work together. We shifted left to the operations team, moving into more of a development capacity, writing infrastructure as code, and, and even you know um, deploying using the same tools and methods uh, that our dev team used. Uh, and more recently, we've started to say, you know, well, wait a minute, you know, we we put all that effort and energy into DevOps, and now we're sort of getting to the end of DevOps. And what happens? Well, we throw it over the fence to the security team, and security says wait a minute, you know, and they've got to pick up those pieces and, and try to figure out how to secure it. And there's a friction point there and it's unnecessary. So what we really wanted to do was drive um, compliance from the beginning. We wanted to understand security before we even put it into, into our customer's hands. So why not bring SEC along with dev and ops? And that's really what we've been trying to do. But of course, that means you have to have tools that support that. Uh, you have to have tools uh, like some of the ones we'll talk about here with Trend Micro called Smart Check that allows you to implement security through your CI CD pipeline instead of at the end. Uh, and, and after you, you know, the application and servers are already stood up. So um, when we moved to the cloud back in 2012, as I mentioned, we started with a three-tier architecture and there's nothing wrong with this. It worked really well. We gained a lot of speed and agility um, and we could just throw up servers and get them up and running. And, and that was great. We used tools like Chef or Ansible or Puppet to um, de use deployment scripts and, and build our environments and install uh, agents like Deep Security, as you see, um, up here on the, each of these uh, front end and back end services, right? And so these are the EC2 servers. We could script the deployment of our application as well as our security control. And that works really well for a long, long time. Uh, but it's still, if you think about it, 
waiting till the end of the process to really put security into place because the servers has to be created and sure you could script it using cloud formation uh, but then you install your applications using you know devops tools like chef or ansible or puppet um, and then you know maybe in those scripts you're also deploying your 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 security stack and that works really really well um, but it but i feel like we could do better and i, and I thought we needed to do better and as I mentioned previously, we started to think about how we could move faster. Moving to the cloud made us move faster. There's really no way around it. You're forced to, to move faster or just get left behind. Um, and now that we're pivot and we're really focusing on how do we get our customer, our data, our application, excuse me, into our customer's hands as quick as possible, we moved ourselves into a microservices architecture. We took away those three tier architectures and we said, stop it and moved ourselves into microservices, embracing containerization and embracing microservices uh, and serverless in some regards. So what happens then is you still need um, in, in like ECS, right? We still need deep security as an agent on there to have all the robust security controls like uh, host space firewall and host space IDS IPS and, and log inspection, all those things that really provide you a lot of you know, security telemetry data about what's going on with your system. Um, we, we do that today. We put it on top of our ECS instances and let that happen. But then we, we also wanted to use uh, Fargate for serverless, because why would we ever want to manage infrastructure if we don't have to? Um, but then there's an interesting problem. Do we install deep security on a container? I mean, that's just kind of silly, isn't it? So we, we thought like, well, what, what do we do? How do we protect this uh, containers? Um, and how do we do that really, really well? Um, so in a serverless world, we really started with uh, Trend Micro Smart Check. And, and what that does for us is give us a vulnerability scan before runtime. And it's really interesting for us to think about like running a vulnerability analysis before it's even in and running somewhere. It's a really bizarre concept in our head. It was always this idea that, you know, you, you've got your application, you've put so much time and effort into building it. It's kind of like this big wooden ship, right? You put it out in the ocean and it's going to sail. It's going to sail for a long time. But inevitably, something will happen and, and, and you'll find some holes in that wooden ship and, and, and it'll go down. And, it, and it's just inevitable. It's the way, to, the way that goes. And what we saw a smart check is, well, we, what if we could just understand the holes before? we put it into the water. Let's just understand the entire context of our security before we go and deploy our application. And that's what Smart Check has done for us. So whether it was on a, a container instance like ECS or serverless um, you know, in Fargate, we're able to run a check ahead of time before it ever hits into production. And that is truly implementation of security inside of your DevOps pipelines. Um, so now we've, we've been able to really create DevSecOps of course, we chose Amazon for, for the most obvious reason for us is we were not gonna get into managing data centers. We just had no interest in understanding how to really do it well. Sure, we had a data center. Um, we still do, right? I mean, our, our, our old company did anyway. But the, the idea is that we, we didn't wanna be good at that. We really wanted to focus just on our customers' needs and our customers' um, requirements and not understanding how cooling works and how to have guards and gates and guns and these sort of things on our, on our, uh, in our data centers. We wanted somebody else who was really good at it to do that and, and Amazon is. Um, but then they also offer us all these new feature sets all the time like containers and, and microservices. So we can, again, continue to only gain focus and focus what uh, on our applications and what's important to our customers. Of course, we chose Trend as well because initially we needed to protect cloud security in 2012 and we learned, oh shoot, how do we do that? And, and Trend was like, hey guys, we got you covered, don't worry. And they gave us Trend Micro's uh, deep security service. And in fact, what's interesting about deep security to us is that we also do it as a service. We don't install that, we go through the Amazon marketplace and we deploy it that way. Uh, excuse me. But we also wanted somebody who had been there and kind of done that. And, and that's really why we stuck around with Trend after all these years is that whenever the environment changes and Amazon link launches new tools and, and, and new services, and we want to take advantage of them, but we also need to do it properly in providing security for our customers. So we inevitably continue uh, to go back to the well and say, all right, Trend, how are we going to do containers and how are we going to do serverless? And they've always had an answer for us. And so we continually come back to them as a key security partner for us. 
Um, with deep security, obviously we can see threats now, as I mentioned, during the dev cycle, uh, instead of waiting till after deployment. We also can see things like um, access keys inside of our inside of our containers, which never happens really. But but man, that one time it might because you get really excited about launching. Oh man, it's better to know ahead of time so you can do something about it instead of waiting until you happen to catch it in some other way. We also get all sorts of um, uh, you know public scanning and also the integration with deep security so that we can focus on virtual patching um, so that we can make a decision to go ahead and launch the app using smart check we could say in our ci cd pipeline we could say no that's too much risk let's not allow that to be in prod um, or we could say we understand the risk and oh by the way we've got deep security on the instance so we got virtual patching it's going to be okay but at least we have that opportunity to make the decision before it's even in runtime so the, the key things I think is interesting is DevOps teams like mine are really focused on um, taking away friction. We really want our developers and, and, and our ops teams to get applications to our customers as fast as possible. Um, but we, we don't do everything. We also need the security team to really help us understand the security. And, and now that we can do that with a frictionless tool like SmartCheck, uh, instead of just throwing it over the fence, uh, we can move much, much faster. And now I think I'll hand it back over to Sean for some Q&A. Thank you so much. Uh, now we would like to open up for uh, chat questions and, and anything else you guys would like to ask. I do have uh, Samir from AWS, who is a solution architect, who will be joining us to address any technical questions overall and uh, look forward to hearing questions you may have. Okay, um, we've received a couple questions around the slide deck. We will address that uh, accordingly. There's currently no video of the presentation, uh, so unfortunately we cannot provide that. But if there aren't any other questions, um, we appreciate everyone joining, taking the time to learn about uh, the offerings of AWS and Trend Micro and uh, Pivot, their experiences, and uh, beyond that, have a wonderful day.